Good morning, YouTubers. Uh, welcome to AKQ Guy. I uh, would like to make a response to Boheme. So, good morning to you in particular. Um, I'm making a response to a video that I think uh, is probably a few months old now at this point. But um, I saw it for the first time just a few weeks ago, and I watched it a few more times and feel like I need to make um, another response because I originally did make a text response, but realize that there was more to it than I thought there was and that I wanted to make a broader response, one that would reach more people. Um, I, th I think my text response was something along the lines that I think there should be a, a mandatory coming out of the closet manual and that video should be in it because I think you made some very good comments that gay guys need to, to be aware of and think about uh, before they go out in public freshly jumping out of that dark closet that they now see the light and feel like they need to share it. Um, but uh, I don't know if you were aware at the time that you were making a social statement on the magnitude that you were, or if you were just having a moment that you just needed to go vetch about uh, a bad day or part of your week. Um, but I thank you because it set the platform, I think, for me to make a response in a couple different levels. Uh, the first one would be um, thank you to all good wait staff. Uh, please be aware I said all good wait staff. So don't think that I'm just thinking all wait staff and there's some guy out there thinking, he's thinking me, I'm great and you actually suck. Um, so if you're a great waiter or waitress and your tips reflect it and people's comments reflect it, thank you so much. Um, I do appreciate it. Specifically, Courtney, last night, which would be Sunday night at the Anchorage, Alaska, Spinard location of Village Inn, you were fantastic. I walked in there um, starving, to be honest, if you remember what I ordered, uh, if you even see this. But um, if you remember what I ordered, I, or I ordered a lot. I had just gone with a run with my dogs, and I hadn't eaten since, oh, probably about 11.30 that day, and it was now 8 o'clock at night. Um, and... I sat around for a while and I read my book and thought, you know, no one's even come to give me a glass of water. And I was getting ready to actually get up and leave, thinking I can go somewhere else and be ignored. Um, and I had to glance around and realize I only saw one girl actually working. Um, well, two girls. There's the, the hostess, and she did bring me some stuff. Um, but the waitress was, she seemed like she was fairly new, um, working her butt off. It was full. And there was this other waitress, I don't really know what she was doing, other than standing outside a lot, smoking. I didn't honestly see you wait on a single one of your tables, but I saw Courtney working her butt off, covering them all. So I gave it a couple more minutes, and within those couple minutes, Courtney made it over to me very apologetically, very sweetly, and took my order, moved on, uh, got me my drink, did everything she needed to do, and checked on me several times, even though she didn't really have the time to. Um, mind you, you seem very flirtatious, and I appreciate it, really. I may be a gay guy, but I still appreciate being flirted with at any time. It makes me feel good. It should make anybody feel good to be flirted with, that is. Um, but I just hope that if the management can't see how worthless the other waitress is, that she successfully gives herself... COPD or lung cancer in a very short amount of time and d die so that they can hire somebody else that can maybe do their job and give you a raise. Um, I hope they give you a raise tomorrow because you deserve it. That's the first level of my comments um, and not the one I really need to focus on. Um, the second level I think is aimed at American audiences in general, specifically younger audiences and gay men, because we seem to have this problem remembering what public decorum should be. In fact, a lot of young gay men in particular have completely forgot there is such a thing and think that they need to announce every little thing, such as their preference for feeling balls on their chin, to an entire audience, whether that was an intentional audience or not. Um, I am someone who has a problem with my mouth. I say things that, as one of my exes put it very poetically, she reached across the table and smacked me I don't know how many times. People don't say things like that! 
Unfortunately, some of us do. And after working five years in ICU, I feel very free saying a lot of things that other people probably wouldn't. Um, I apologize, Ryan. I didn't mean to embarrass you. But um, what I would like to ask, being someone with this problem, is that when you're going to say such things, I understand that filter is not always going to catch it. Sometimes my filter does, and I can shut it down. Um, sometimes I don't shut it down until it's halfway out, but I do shut it down. But sometimes I realize that I really want to say it. It needs to be said, but I can manage my volume. And that's what I'd like to ask all of you to be aware of. I realize that most gay men, especially ages 18 to, well, hell, 88, have two volumes. They have loud, which is kind of like stadium speakers blaring and echoing across the entire arena, and they have off. I would ask that if you cannot work on any lower level, to just to work on off. Because sometimes off is the better part of valor. So, like I said, I have been the victim of bitchy queens in public who feel the need to run their mouth about something that is none of their business. And I have also victimized others being a bitchy queen that was running my mouth about something that was none of my business. Um... Hmm, victimizing people with my mouth. That sounds like it would be so much more fun than it really was. Uh, believe me, I'm not talking about any of the fun times that I victimized someone or was a victim of their mouths. We'll talk about those in another video, another time. But being one of those people, I would like you to be aware that when you're in a public setting, no matter what that setting is, you have the people you're with who is your intended audience that you want to say something to. But you're also surrounded by other people who are not necessarily your intended audience, but are going to be an audience anyway. They're going to hear you. Um, and this may be made up of small children, old people, or people in general. And you need to be aware that you are not the one person that that entire setting is revolving around. Unless you're up at the front with a microphone in your hand and everyone is paying to sit and listen to you. Unless you're that person... There's no one else there that's revolving around you. And that you're not the most important person. In fact, in general, when you're in a big room like that, I find that importance level is pretty even across the board, except for the few of us that realize that we're less important than anyone else. Been there, done that. So, I would ask, again, that when you are in public, that you watch what you say, because you're not having often the effect that you think you are. There's not some guy sitting behind you thinking, I really don't like gay guys, but that guy telling us about, you know, how he loves to give head and he loves, you know, working on that little ridge as it moves into the shaft. He is so cool. I think I need to get to know gay guys more. You know, you're having probably the the exact opposite effect. He is now going to have a one more negative image to put with his already negative thoughts of gay people or what other class or designation of people that you happen to be representing at that time. You're just making you and anyone that you consider yours look worse. So on that note, I think I'd like to say goodbye. You all have a great night, a great day, especially Boheme and Courtney. I hope you both have fantastic days. And any good weight staff out there, again, thank you so very much. And you guys have a great one.